Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you're at on this Friday. Finally made it out here to the weekend. All right, Friday, March 21st, 2025, 6.53 a.m. That's California time here. Uh, got some movement down across the San Andreas Fault here, the southern segment. That is the south branch of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, with a little swarm going on here not really a good thing to see here on this friday uh, really no main quake just a bunch of small microquakes out here nothing above 2.5 but it is a, a little cluster of quakes here of about 15 earthquakes just off the san andreas fault here where things are well they're quite tense quite strained out here and they have been uh, for over 300 years along that southern branch of the san andreas fault is when the last big one took place now according to many geologists and size, uh, scientists they feel that this uh, southern branch here of the San Andreas fault uh, can produce an 8.1 due to the amount of strain that has been building up since the last big rupture out here and of course the length of the fault the length of the fault system the plate boundary here has a lot to do with that magnitude as well of course the larger um, slip here in terms of rupture along that plate boundary, the larger the earthquake will be. But they throw around a number of an 8.1 earthquake there for the uh, southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. And you know, if, if you think about the central segment up here and a little bit further up north here as well, a lot of time has passed since, uh, since we've had any uh, large earthquake activity. So hold on a second here. and shut that real quick the uh, um, AC unit came in came on here where I'm staying right now still out and about on location uh, with Missy Mimi's here we're not in the blizzard anymore that was pretty crazy the other night or the, or the other day up in Nebraska but uh, still on location still covering earthquake activity um, I'm hoping this anything that uh, big that may take place out here holds off until I can get home but uh, this swarm that we're seeing here today uh, looks like it fired up. Uh, there was a little, well, a lot of that's from yesterday. There was a little separate swarm down here on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. Here's today's swarm. This is yesterday's swarm of about, uh, let's see how many earthquakes we got here. About 12 earthquakes. A couple more from today as well. Looks like four of them. And it's just... Uh, right over here where today's activity is uh, ramping up so you know the plate boundary is the main culprit that accumulates all the strain a lot of these other fault systems prior to the plate boundary you know they're, they got their own um, slip accumulation there and, and they can see earthquake activity but the main plate boundary here is the one that we have to watch and that's the San Andreas fault and it is uh, not looking good today far as activity there south and just on the opposite side here of the plate boundary that's that's a key indicator here of a really strained um, a really strained area along that plate boundary and this is just you know in the last 24 hours if we account for all the elevated activity out here in Southern California in the past several weeks and past few months you know we've we've seen a lot this could very well be pointing to something big happening and then when it does take place we'll have all this data uh, to go back on and see what uh, you know transpired trans uh, trans uh, man where's my brain at transpired um, before that big earthquake struck so uh, it's just something you know we got to watch got to be prepared for it's coming I've been hearing about it for a long time right I'm sure many of you have as well but these could very well be telltale signs here that a big one is imminent. Now, whether it's happening today or in the next couple weeks, that's something we're going to have to watch, folks, and see how it plays out. But we've got uh, two separate swarms here, one on the Pacific side, one on the North American side. And right there is where the uh, southern branch is. All right, moving up further north here, we even got a little bit of activity south along the Imperial Fault today so this this whole area is just kind of it's moving but remember folks these little earthquakes do nothing nothing at all in fact I think uh, dr. Lucy Jones here she put out a little interesting uh, social media posts 
that it takes uh, what is it three or five thousand uh, three pointers to relieve the strain of a five pointer you know as far as energy accumulation goes so these little earthquakes even the threes and fours do nothing to um, eliminate the inevitable <laughs> you know and that's the big earthquake activity that uh, is in the future that is you know there's nothing we can do about it the best thing to do is be prepared uh, make sure you have an earthquake plan Los Angeles area pretty quiet not a whole lot going on there for now um, across the area further up north Bay Area uh, some movement out here in between the Hayward and the Calaveras fault this is another region that uh, has seen a little bit of swarming as well there in the area Let's see how many earthquakes we got there in total tally about 24 or so bunch of ones some twos I think we even had a 3.9 in that mix as well uh, again just another area that we've witnessed here in the last um, several weeks of increasing movement all across uh, the California area Northern California one earthquake right now 2.1 that uh, within the last hour it looks like southern end of the Cascadia mega thrust area um, let me check I forgot to check the trimmer last night let me double check here and see what we got for yesterday's trimmer oh wow hundred that was a pretty decent number 151 epicenters of trimmer underneath the Vancouver uh, island ranges up here um, I don't see anything down south all of that happening up north there uh, any increasing movement for earthquake activity up here? Doesn't look like it, but as always, we'll keep an eye on this region. It's been showing some interesting activity as well with tremor uh, resulting in earthquake, larger earthquake activity up here in the region. I don't see anything popping up there of any noteworthy value as of yet, so definitely watch it though. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a couple smaller quakes there from yesterday. Uh, nothing new to report there for today uh, let's see Texas Oklahoma oil field still getting hit latest earthquake outside of Amber Oklahoma for a 2.3 new Madrid seismic zone pretty quiet one earthquake there from yesterday that's a 2.8 that's actually a decent sized earthquake there for that region although it can get much much bigger uh, outside of New York uh, 1.8 this is another area that uh, has historically had big earthquakes, or at least a lot more bigger than you know, bigger than what we're seeing right now. Uh, and that's around the New York area. I can't remember the last one that happened out there. I think it was 17, late 1700s or so, or so. And these areas that you see on the hazard map here are just areas of historical large earthquakes. And hundreds of years have passed since we've seen large earthquake activity in these highly uh, newly developed I should say newly developed for human uh, for human civilization out here you know our, our span of population density has grown uh, tremendously since those large earthquakes struck so uh, there would be a, a whole lot of uh, damage out here if we were to get one of those quakes anywhere across any of these areas in today's world because they, uh, they can get big all right, uh, let's see what else we got here across the area. Get rid of the U.S. hazard, population density. Let's take a look here at the global view. Uh, Puerto Rico area still. Let's see a couple more earthquakes after midnight. Some twos up here. The latest of 1.6. Been quite active out here recently with a pretty decent amount of earthquake activity. The latest one uh, back over here across the southwestern side of Puerto Rico. I gotta watch this area here as well. It, it is capable of producing uh, a mega quake. I did a little bit of uh, investigating here a couple years ago, made a video, and uh, kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, not gonna go into detail today, but if you want, check it out on my channel. Um, I think it's titled Puerto Rico Mega Quake Possibility. Uh, so I covered that a little bit more in in depth detail. Right now, we're still seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity around that region. Uh, far as let's see what else we got out here I like the terrain view a little bit better they're still not uh, not like they should be as uh, far as mentioning of the Peru Chile Trench and the Ecuador Trench that's actually missing off of their uh, map details here so hopefully they get that back up there's a neat little 
neat little added bonus here on the maps. Uh, let's see here. Alaska still seeing some activity up here. Most of this from yesterday. They had a bunch of fours up here. Um, the latest, another four pointer, 28 miles deep there into that subduction zone. Been quite active up there. So we'll watch that area as well. Uh, let's see here. Pretty active around the Australia region down here, it looks like, or around the plate boundary, that is. Uh, one of the latest quakes in the area, 4.7. Um, but aside from that, what do we got so far for the largest quake? Last 24 hours goes to well, the mid-Indian Ridge earthquake, but after midnight, a 5.1 uh, near Mongolia, way up north here. Handful of earthquakes across the Middle East area as well. And it looks like the Santorini area, a 4.3. So let's go check out Santorini real quick, see if we got anything going on there. I haven't really been covering it a lot because the earthquake swarming has gone down. But uh, it looks like we may be picking up here a little bit. 283 earthquakes in the area in the last week. Um, the latest of 4.6 up along the, uh, or down along the Chile, Bolivia area. Let's see where that, there's that 4.3 that struck um, a few hours ago, right in the mix of things. There's a, a bunch of threes there, and uh, followed up by 4.3, so things are not done yet. After probably 17,000 earthquakes or so in the last couple months here, I know it's died off a little bit in the last couple weeks, but um, occasionally we'll see this outbreak here of uh, elevated larger magnitudes um, even if this is a magma intrusion of some sort uh, it doesn't necessarily uh, will turn into an eruption that takes a little bit of time and some buildup of pressure right uh, otherwise you know this could go on for a little while before we indeed see some type of eruption but we've got to watch these magnitudes see if it kicks back up or not in terms of elevated uh, seismic activity but uh, that's a decent earthquake 4.3 I don't know uh, I think it's been a couple weeks since we've seen a 4.3 in there but uh, we'll continue to watch that and report back on anything if it changes there uh, the Campe for the gray region of Italy that's back over here a um, couple earthquakes in the one the lower one range but really nothing of any uh, major interest 3.2 further south it's just you know, it's one of those areas that get a lot of earthquake activity and then it goes quiet and um, we'll just continue to watch it. A little swarming going on here off the north coast or the, uh, well, the what would that be, off the west coast there? East coast of the Italy area. They have this southern Italy. Looks like a bunch of ones out here. A pretty good cluster of quakes, including a, a five-pointer. That was just about a week ago. All right, let's see uh, what else we got here for space weather activity real quick, folks, and then we'll uh, get going. Let's see, magnetogram image here shows. Uh, let's see here, a whole bunch of sunspots, right? There's a um, pretty decent amount, but uh, man, there's not even anything on here that I see of any noteworthy flaring potential here. Um, goodness <laughs> everything pretty stable folks that's you know my observation there there's really not a whole lot of threats for any flaring activity uh, these guys showing a 5% chance for X flare and flare at minimal 30% chance and as you can see here in the last couple days it's just pretty much flatlined I wouldn't doubt it here if we start to dip down maybe into the B flare category there's really not a whole lot happening there. No major roars as well. Um, a couple different coronal holes out here that may enhance the roars in the coming nights, probably after a couple days or so. Here in a couple days, uh, there's 25 here, which is a, a decent coronal hole, and 24. But uh, as of right now, really nothing major in the forecast. Storm Prediction Center for severe weather, nothing in uh, as far as today or tomorrow goes it looks like day three might have a slight risk for some severe weather down there across portions of the south but uh not anything major as of right now so have a good day folks enjoy your friday 
We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening for the Friday night update. Take care.